Typically, if you wanted a PC rocking a Core i9-9900K and a GTX 1080, you would need something like this. But here's the problem. If you have a desktop on top of your desk, then there isn't a whole lot of desk left on the top, which is why you need one of these. The ASRock Mini comes in at just 2.7 liters while packing nearly the maximum amount of power that you can expect in any PC. So if you're a content creator and looking for a new system that fits your minimal aesthetic, should you go for the reigning champ, the Mac Mini, or the new kid on the block, the Desk Mini? Are you looking for an affordable and reliable VPN? Well, private internet access has got your back. They encrypt your internet traffic and use a safe protected IP. Check it out today at the link below. The first big difference between the Mac Mini and the Desk Mini can be seen before even powering it on. With the Mac, you just have this nice cord that goes from the back of the machine to the wall. Whereas ASRock has included this massive 330 watt external power brick that you'll need to put somewhere. Next, pressing the power button on the Mac Mini causes it to power on, which surprisingly isn't the case with the Desk Mini. You can press its power button all you want, but out of the box it will do literally nothing because it comes as a bare bones kit. So you'll have to install the RAM and storage yourself, which fortunately is quite easy. Just remove the four screws in the back, pop the top, and you'll have access to two DDR4 SODIMM slots that allow you to smack up to 32 gigabytes of RAM in there. Well, we're gonna stick to 16. We're humble. Next, remove two more screws near the front of the machine and you should be able to take out the whole inner assembly, revealing the bottom of the board and all its storage goodness. We're talking three M.2 drive slots where we're gonna be adding a one terabyte 970 Pro, plus an additional M.2 for Wi-Fi, as well as two two and a half inch bays for additional solid or spinning storage. Flipping the desk mini back over, let's take a look at the hardware we actually care about. This almost unassuming PCB and heatsink over here is actually a full blown GTX 1080. Nice. But the interesting thing is that under this 65 watt rated Noctua cooler is a 95 watt Intel Core i9-9900K. Sounds kind of toasty. So let's, let's see how it fares starting with Blender. I imagine that the majority of people looking for either the Desk Mini or the Mac Mini are planning on using them for creative power. And initial results are looking very good for the Desk Mini with the i9 not only able to mince the i7 found in the Mac Mini, it also maintained very respectable boost clocks that allowed it to tangle with much larger PCs as well. Now it did get a bit sweaty there around 85 degrees Celsius, so definitely no overclocking. But this is still damn impressive performance from a system this small, especially given it does so while well remaining nice and quiet. Where the Desk Mini absolutely humiliates the Mac is in gaming, since number one, it just wins by default since uh, lots of games don't even run on Mac OS, and number two, because the little GTX 1080 in here puts in work, son, and it sounds like it too. <laughs> Without the gentle knock to a touch, the GPU is uncomfortably loud. You'll definitely want some noise canceling headphones for gaming sessions. And, and really, if you're gonna be gaming a whole bunch, it's conceivable that you may want an RTX 2080 at some point. So why is it that this only comes with a GTX 1080? Well, the Desk Mini uses an MXM card, a standard that Nvidia might have killed off, or maybe not if some uh, rumors are to be believed, but either way, at this point in time, 20 series MXM cards are not available and until officially confirmed, they might stay that way completely killing upgradability. So if you plan on gaming, then just get an MSI Trident X, right? Maybe if you like having obnoxious rainbow barf on your desk, but I for one actually love how despite its gaming grade hardware, the Desk Mini has an understated premium styling. But ASRock did include an RGB port if you're into that sort of thing. Compared to the Mac Mini though, it's definitely not as stealth, but hey, this venting is here for a reason. If you have wireless peripherals and never use USB drives, the Mac Mini is a pretty good time. But I do really appreciate that ASRock has kept USB A and C along with a headphone jack on the front of the machine for easy access. As for IO in general, the four Thunderbolt ports on the Mac do offer amazing versatility if you've got the dongles. But like, the first thing I wanted to do is connect it to a display with a DisplayPort cable and that just wasn't an option without a dongle. <laughs> 
The desk mini though doesn't have any Thunderbolt 3 ports, but other than that, the IO is pretty solid. Where the Mac mini really whoops the desk mini is in networking. Given that these systems are aimed at creative professionals, the option of 10 gig ethernet on the Mac mini is massive for anyone that's working on files that live on a server, like in our office. We actually bought a second Mac mini for this video because the first one was already in use at our video ingest station. And it's working so well that we wanted to get another one. So if your primary use case is dealing with 8K footage, the Mac mini is great. But for everyone else, it might just be freaking expensive. With a semi-reasonably spec'd Mac mini coming in at an eye-watering $2,200, surely the desk mini must be... It's a lot. Oh, uh, well, what? It's $2,500. It's $2,500 $2, with the i9. Okay, so yeah, for that same price, you could have the MSI Trident X with the considerably more powerful RTX 2080, or you could get even more bang for your buck by building your own PC altogether. So this leaves the desk mini in a bit of an awkward situation since it's a lot of money to be spending for last-gen graphics that sound like a TIE fighter storming your office. Which is why I don't think you should buy the Desk Mini with a GTX 1080. You should look into the Desk Mini with a GTX 1060. That way you can get the small form factor, more CPU performance, plus discrete graphics, all for about $400 less than the Mac Mini, which is what I would do. Speaking of things I would do, I would go out and buy Ting. Ting is the mobile carrier that's focused on customer service and customer satisfaction first. Don't speak to a robot. With Ting, you get put through directly to a person. You pay only for what you use, and the average Ting bill is only $23 per month per device. If you're stuck in a contract and switch to Ting, they'll cover 25% of your cancellation fee, up to 75 bucks. And they have lowered their mobile data rates. Data is now just $10 per gigabyte beyond the second gigabyte. Every single Ting customer is gonna be able to reap the benefits of this new change. So lower your phone bill now at linus.ting.com and get $25 in Ting credit. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, like it, get subscribed and check out the links to blow, <laughs> to blow, whoa. <laughs> check out the links below for where to buy some of the stuff we featured in this video. Also down there is our merch store and our link to our forum, which you should totally join.